you're watching Car Babble. I'm Ewan and this is the 2017 Volvo S60 D4 R Design Lux Nav with Polestar Optimization. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why it's the best value use car I've ever bought and in this particular spec, why it's an absolute gem of an all rounder. So before I get too emotional about the fact I'm about to sell this thing, buckle up, let's get into it. So let's take a look inside the boot of this thing and it is a manual opening. There is no electric tailgates on the previous gen Volvo S60s and V60s. But anyway, 380 litres in here and it gets smaller if you have a spare wheel by quite a bit. So I would avoid that because it's already 25% roughly smaller a boot than you'll get in premium rivals. It's not got anything very exciting going on. There's no tie down points or anything. It's a very basic boot, but to be honest, I'm quite fine with that. It's uh, It's got a ski hatch and it's got 60-40 split folding rear seats. I've never had a problem with this boot. The main thing for me is, could I get my golf clubs and my trolley in it? And it could. And it's a little bit wider here, so you can get your clubs across it. But yeah, it's a pretty simplistic boot and it's definitely not one you're gonna be bin shopping at Ikea and loading it up with the kids in the back. It ain't gonna happen. So if you can accept that, yeah, it's okay. Space in the back of the S60 isn't its strong point at all. We're talking kind of hatchback levels of space at best. Knee room, I'm five foot nine, that's in my driving position, and yeah, I've not got very much at all. My feet are struggling to get underneath the seat as well, but I do like my seat quite low. You do have reasonably good headroom though, it's not too bad. The seats are amazingly comfortable, they're just as good as the front. Napa leather as well still, and just lovely and squidgy. Central seat is not great though, it's bit higher and yeah you're not really gonna have three people in the back of this car especially if you've got child seats in there too there is isofix of course but you will struggle to get this central armrest down with those in, in place you've got adaptive teeth on your cup holders though so that's good connectivity is all right but not amazing you've got one 12 volt socket and no third zone climate control but you've got a couple of air vents up there door pockets what are they all about? I mean that, yeah, the only thing I ever put in there is my kids bits of Lego that they drop. There's just no room for anything in there, so thankfully you've got that central armrest for our cup holders. And yeah, everything's soft and squidgy, quality is equally good back here as in the front, and you've got airbags and the side curtains, etc. So yeah, it's a lovely, comfortable, safe place for a couple of kids. Now, Volvo will sell you a lower power diesel in the D2, which is a 1.6 diesel, and you can also get the lower power 2 liter diesel in the D3. You can also get a T series petrol engine, but I don't want to talk about any of that today because I really believe you want to be getting the D4 because the performance is noticeably more than the D3 and the fuel economy is marginally lower. You can then get the Polestar tune, which this has, and that's where I want to focus because I really believe for the £800 or so, it costs extra to get it, and you can get it fitted by Volvo aftermarket. It is definitely worth it. So, the standard D4 gets you 190 brake horsepower and 400 new mirrors of torque. If you have the Polestar tune, you get 200 horsepower and 440 new mirrors of torque. And that is significant, especially in the mid range. And that's one of the things Polestar say is mid range pulling power will be better. And it is definitely a lot better. You also get better throttle response and faster and slicker gear shift timings. And again, for this eight speed torque converter, you definitely notice the difference. I have driven the V60 in standard D4 guys. And as a comparison, without a doubt, there is a difference. So for that money, no brainer. So if you're riding shotgun in this car, I guarantee the first thing you're going to say to the driver is, oh my God, these seats are amazing. Because they are. They are literally the comfy seats I've sat in in any car ever. I can't say enough about them. Soft Napa leather, but they are in their design really well bolstered. Okay, if you were really horizontally challenged, they might be too well bolstered, but they are very comfy. They feel like they're giving you a hug. Just really, really lovely. You've got three position memory, two way lumbar support. You get four way in more modern Volvos, but oh, they're just so comfy. You could do hundreds of miles in these and you get out feeling absolutely buzzing. 
The driving position is great. Well, my elbows don't really sit very well on this side because this swoops down and you can't move the central armrest forward at all. But this side's good. And yeah, the steering wheel feels nice in the hands. It's leather, but it is a bit slidey when it's cold. But yeah, driving position's amazing and Volvo always nail that. The buttons feel really, really nicely damped. You've got your adaptive cruising uh, settings on the side and you've got your track skip and voice control and volume settings on the right. And then you've got your cockpit, which is kind of semi-digital and does everything you want it. Although you have to be in sport mode to get the digital speedo, which is really weird. Thankfully, I drive in sport mode anyway all the time, so not an issue, but I don't really know what they were thinking with that. Storage is all right. It's no Skoda, that's for sure. You've not got big door bins. You probably get a wallet and some sunglasses in there, which is just as well because there's no compartment for them up there. This central bin is quite narrow, but it is quite deep. Um, you have got a couple of big cup holders which have adaptive kind of teeth and one is deeper than the other, so no issues with those. You've got this floating console here, which means behind it you can fit some more stuff. The glove box is fairly big and that's about all to say really, but what I really want to talk about is this infotainment system because it's got a lot of bad press in the past and I really don't know why. Firstly, it's never crapped out, I mean, all the time I've had this car, but most importantly, it's all buttons and it's so easy to get where you want to go. But the main thing is you can do almost everything via your right thumb. So when you're driving along, you can use the scroll wheel and you can scroll up and down, you can press it and then you can use the exit button to go back, which is the equivalent of having a scroll wheel in the middle of your console, except you don't need to do any of that. You're literally driving and all you do is that and you can control everything in there. All you have to do at times is press either radio or media, but you can still even get to them if you scroll back the way enough from the wheel. It is that simple. And I am amazed that more car companies do not use a system where you can control the infotainment through the steering wheel. These days, you'll get your adaptive cruise control and maybe some safety settings on the steering wheel and your skip and volume and stuff like that, but that's it. But you always have to use something else, either a scroll wheel or a touchscreen to get to the infotainment. But in this car, you don't need to do that. You can still use the scroll wheel and the exit button to go back and that's it. Absolutely brilliant, so simple. I do not know why cars over-engineer stuff more than that because it really is as easy as it gets. And I've absolutely loved this infotainment system because it really is just so simple to use. And finally, a little nod to quality because that is something that the older generation of Volvos is really, really good for. And if you buy a newer Volvo, you will notice a little dip in that because it's built in a far country from Sweden. These cars feel like they will do 200,000 miles easily. And yeah, the materials are quality in all the right places. There's a few scratchy plastics, but they're not the places that you would normally touch. And it just feels like everything's built to last. The central console doesn't move and all the buttons are nicely damped and feel like they will last and last and last. The buttons and the steering wheel as well. But listen to this doors close. That sounds like somebody's loading a gun. And after 200,000 miles, I'm willing to bet it'll still sound like that. Absolute quality and robustness, number one. So, out in the road in the S60, and let's see what this is like when I put my foot down. Major turbo lag and the gearbox takes ages to kick down if you if you put your foot right to the floor but once it goes yeah it's not like you know sucking you in the back of your seat but it is fast fast enough and the key thing is in the mid-range when you're doing sort of 40 to 70 miles an hour and you need to overtake somebody absolutely effortless if you're looking for a really sporty car to drive and go around corners in this ain't it. It's definitely not one of its strong points. You want that, get a BMW 3 Series. This thing is stiffly set up, so there's not a lot of body roll, not a lot of right comfort either, to be honest, but it's just, the steering is just not very good, and it's front wheel drive, and yeah, it's not a sporty chassis, so that is not the area of this car that I think is a major selling point. At idle, this diesel engine is really loud and rattly, um, I would say even louder in more modern Volvos, to be honest, but when you get up to speed, you don't really notice it. Um, there's a little bit of wind noise from the wing mirrors, um, and your tyres aren't too bad, but yeah, it's 
It's not overly quiet in here, but it's quiet enough. The gearbox being an eight-speed torque converter is a good thing and not a good thing. It's it's definitely better with the Polestar optimization. I do think the gear shift timings and speed is quicker than the standard D4, but it isn't a sporty gearbox. Um, however, as a reliability thing, it's gonna be a lot better in the long term for a used car. You're not gonna have any problems with this gearbox probably really throughout. If you had a Volkswagen Group product and a DSG, mm, I would be concerned about having one of them for 100,000 miles. Fuel economy is pretty good as well, and I think that's part of why I just love this overall package. You know, if you were driving a petrol engine now, you'd have to have as big as maybe a 1.5 TSI max before you get the same kind of fuel economy. But this, 44.2 miles per gallon I'm getting at the moment as an average. In the winter, it's nearer 40, and on the motorway, I can get up to 50, but yeah, no matter what I do in normal driving, I'm looking at around 43 to 45, and for the amount of performance you've got, I'll take that. Visibility is pretty good as well. You know, A and B pillars aren't too bad, and yeah, reasonably big C pillar, but you'd expect that from a saloon, but you know, you've got this frameless rear view mirror, and generally, I feel like I can see everything I need to see. You've got blind spot monitoring, you've got rear parking sensors, Boom. But you just could do so many miles in this thing, you know, it's just so comfortable and well, everything works so well. I say the adaptive cruise control, I've been in cars recently, new cars that have adaptive cruise control and it, you're driving along and it thinks that there's a car in front of you when it's in the next lane and it slams the brakes on all the time. This never happens in this car and this is a 2017 car. I have never had that happen to me once. It's been amazing. Blind spot monitoring is great. The lane keep, I always switch off, but it does work. It just fidgets the wheel a bit to put it back in line and that's fine. It's not overly aggressive. You've got rear cross traffic alert as well. What else do you need? It's just it's just got all the main safety features. I don't like the collision warning, it's a bit oversensitive, so I just switched that off. But the key thing really is you can actually switch things off permanently, which you cannot do in a lot of cars. So before I had this car, I had an Audi A6 van and it had high beam assist and it did not work at all. I'd be driving a country road, go around a corner with my high beams on, wait for it to dip them, and it wouldn't do it anywhere near quick enough. And people would be flashing me and mm, all that to me. In this car, it's got the shadow technology and adaptive headlights. They're halogens, but they really work and they dip their beams and they split the beams around cars in front of you and oncoming traffic. And I have almost never been flashed in all the time I've had this car, which is really good considering how many years old this car is. So with the R-Design Lux Nav, you're getting the Lux pack on top of Nav. And yeah, you're not gonna get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in this car, this is the previous gen, obviously. You will get that in newer Volvos, but the standard sat-nav works pretty well, not had a lot of issues with it. But yeah, you do get pretty much all the luxuries with this, and then you add the driver assistance pack and the winter pack, and that's what these options are on this car. And the winter pack's amazing, you know, you've got a heated windscreen, which is one of the best things of any car option you can ever get in my opinion you've got heated seats you've got heated water wash jets no heat steering wheel though which would be nice but that again previous gen volvos didn't have them and then yeah you also get this driver assistance pack which has got all the bits and pieces i, I told you about before you can also get a harman and cardin sound system which i don't have on this it's about the only other option that you can really get to be honest and you don't really need it because the Volvo standard sound systems are just fantastic. Right up till you get really super loud, I really think, unless you're a total audiophile, you don't really need to be thinking about getting upgraded sound systems in Volvos. And that's one of the things, again, I, I think it trumps over a lot of its rivals because standard sound systems in other cars quite often are almost designed to be crap so that you pay for the upgrade. But yeah, I mean, really, if you can live with the fact that this console just looks so old school, um, I don't know what there is to complain about really anywhere. I don't feel like anything's ever going to break on this car. Um, servicing's expensive. Don't get me wrong, Volvo servicing is, to be honest. Once a car's out of warranty, either pay for an extended warranty or just go an independent dealer and you'll save a heap of money. Right, this car, though, it just feels like it's a little bit more niche market. Don't see that many of them on the road. I think if people want a used premium car, they're always going to go, oh, I've got a BMW 3 Series or a Mercedes C Class or a Audi A4 or something, you know? And I'm like, guys, you're really missing out here because you're gonna pay a lot more money for the same spec as this has got. And then you've got the extra things that this has got, like the amazingly comfy seats that you will not get 
in a BMW or an Audi even and the safety features of this car and the fact it is a Volvo and so if you crash it you're more likely to survive and so if it is your family car maybe not your main family car but your like second car in the family bit of peace of mind there that you've got a really safe car for your family to be in because yeah they're just bloody good at that so i mentioned before that i actually i'm looking to sell this car and it really is going to be bittersweet because i'm ready for a new car we need a bigger family car etc etc and i know that if i sell this privately i'll be able to get a really good deal for it now but i'm really going to miss it i've had a real emotional connection with this car because it just does all the things i think are important in a car really really well i paid 17 and a half grand for this when i bought it and it was only a year old and it had 9,000 on the clock and it's still a warranty obviously and that was less than half price for a car that had has been this good to me and that has that much kit on it I really feel like I've had my money's worth and I reckon I could sell this for 13 or 14 grand so to think that I've had four years of love with this car and it may only have cost me a few grand overall is mental and very satisfying but yeah as I say you do get great deals on Volvo saloons that are used because they just seem to depreciate quicker and I think that's definitely one of the reasons why you want to keep one on your shortlist. But yeah, I, I really am sad to see this go. So final thoughts on the Volvo S60. Well, I've had this car for quite a long time and it's been an absolute joy to own. It really has. Reliability wise, it's been great as well. It has just not let me down in any way. It's been really fun to own. It's been great to blow past traffic. It's been so comfy to spend time in. The tech is so easy and reliable. Everything about this car just works. And as a bargain, this depreciates more and for some reason Volvo saloons just seem to just that little bit more than their German rival counterparts which is saying something because very little cars actually depreciate at the moment anyway but I really believe you could pick up an absolute bargain for one of these particularly look for one that has the full solar optimization if you can get it because it really does add a few extra little tweaks that just make it that much more performance based I absolutely love this car I really am gonna be sad to see it go I might have mentioned that but anyway those are my thoughts Love to know what yours are, so please do leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching my video, and if you enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.